the solar industry is facing its biggest shakeup in the last 20 years. And most homeowners have no idea what's about to hit them. I'm John from My Solar Home, and today I'm breaking down exactly what's happening. Financing companies, the ones that make solar affordable for millions of families, they are starting to collapse. And on top of that, utility companies are rewriting the rules to protect their profits. But here's the twist. If you understand these changes before everybody else, there's still a massive opportunity to save big and protect your investment. Let's dive in. Let's break this down step by step. The biggest immediate threat to solar is right in front of us. The 30% federal solar tax credit is set to completely expire on December 31st, 2025. Not phased out, not reduced, gone, gone for good. And here's why that matters. That lower monthly payment you heard about, that's gone. That smooth bill swap, solar at a lower price than your electric bill, not happening anymore. But here's the part most homeowners miss. It's not enough to just sign a contract before the deadline. Your system has to be installed, inspected, and turned on by December the 31st. If it isn't, you lose the credit entirely. Right now, the industry is already under pressure. Installers are booked months out, equipment delays are growing, timelines are tight. So even if you're ready, the real question is, can your installer actually deliver in time? If you're serious about solar, don't wait. Act now or really risk losing thousands in that federal tax savings forever. The second big shift in solar that's happening right now, and that honestly, it's not pretty, some of the Biggest companies that fueled America's rooftop solar boom are collapsing. And whether you already have solar or you're just starting to look, this could hit you directly. Here's the part most homeowners don't know. Getting a solar loan from a solar finance company is nothing like getting a loan from your local bank. Why? Because solar finance companies like Mosaic, Goodleap, SunGage, Sunlight Financial, they're not real banks. They don't have checking accounts. They don't have deposits from everyday customers. Instead, they borrow money from Wall Street and then lend it out to homeowners for solar. And then they turn around and package all those loans into giant bundles that are sold off to investors. Think of it like this. They borrow $10 million from a hedge fund. They lend it to 500 homeowners at $20,000 each. Then they bundle those 500 loans together, sell the whole package to a pension fund or some other institutional investor for $11 million, and they pocket the difference of $1 million. They're middlemen. And when those middlemen start collapsing, it just doesn't affect the companies. It ripples straight down to homeowners like you. But that's not all. Here's where things get downright shady. These solar finance companies charge what are called dealer fees to the solar installation companies. And those have skyrocketed. Back when solar financing first started, fees were around 8%. Today, we're talking 30%, even 40%. Let me show you what that actually means. Imagine you're quoted $30,000 for a solar system. Hidden inside that price is a $12,000 dealer fee. That's 40% of your project cost, siphoned off to the finance company before your installer even touches a tool. The real system, the panels, the labor, the equipment might only cost $18,000, but you're stuck paying $30,000 with no clue that that $12,000 just vanished into hidden fees. And it gets worse. These most popular solar loans are for a 25 year term. And that matches nicely with the 25 year solar systems warranty. Sounds great, right? They tell you if anything goes wrong in the next quarter century, they'll fix it or they'll guarantee your power output. But here's the catch. The average solar installer only stays in business for six to seven years. So when that installer disappears, who's really gonna stand behind that 25 year promise? And things are about to get a lot tougher with this new big, beautiful bill. Here's why. 
many solar installers are sitting on massive backlogs of projects that only make sense with the 30% federal tax credit. But that credit disappears at the end of this year. When it does, a lot of those companies simply won't survive. And that creates a really dangerous situation for homeowners. You could be left with a solar system that stops working, but your loan payments keep going for another 20 years. Meanwhile, your installer, gone, out of business. That's already been happening in the industry, but with these new changes, the collapse is gonna accelerate and fast. My advice to anybody thinking about going solar right now is simple. Avoid taking out a loan until the dust settles. If you're ready to move forward, pay cash, and only work with a reliable solar installer who has the systems and processes in place to get your project fully installed before December the 31st. That's the only way to be sure you lock in your tax credit. If you don't have the cash upfront to buy your system, your safer option right now is a solar lease. From a warranty and service perspective, it offers much more protection. With the lease, the solar company is responsible for guaranteeing your system's output for the next 25 years. If your panels stop producing power, you don't pay, period. That makes it a far less risky proposition than a loan in today's environment. But here's the catch. Not all leases are created equal. Some are structured so poorly that you could end up losing thousands instead of saving. That's why I strongly recommend you watch my video dedicated to solar leases before signing a new lease. And yes, solar lease companies can fail too. Solar leasing giant Posigen just laid off nearly all its employees and Sonoba declared bankruptcy a few months back. But the key difference is this. With a lease, your payments are tied directly to actual energy production. With a loan, you're stuck making payments no matter what even if your system stops working. The third big shakeup happening in solar is happening with net metering, and it's already hitting homeowners across the country. Here's the simple version. During the day, your solar panels usually produce more power than your home needs. That extra electricity falls back to the grid, and traditionally, your utility gave you a credit for it. It was a fair one-to-one -one deal. Send one kilowatt hour to the grid, get one kilowatt hour credit Back. You could use this credit at night when your panels weren't producing or during the winter time when the days were short. But utilities hate this setup. Their entire business model is based on buying electricity at wholesale rates. That's like two to three cents per kilowatt hour. And then selling it to you for between 15 to even 50 cents per kilowatt hour. That markup is their profit. Now when they're forced to buy your solar power at retail rates, and sell it to your neighbor at the same price, they make nothing. And that is very difficult for them to swallow because they're not making profits and they still have to maintain those poles, those wires, and all that infrastructure. So utilities started rewriting the rules. California led the way with NEM 3.0. Now, instead of a one-to-one -one exchange, you might have to send four to five or even six kilowatt hours just to get credit for one state's like Arizona and Nevada are following the same path. And it doesn't stop there. Many utilities are switching to time of use rates, where electricity prices change as per the time of day. The problem, your solar produces the most during noontime, and that's the time energy is at its cheapest. Whereas you use the most energy run about 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., that's when the rates are sky high, and your solar is not producing. That means you could be sending power worth eight cents at midday back to the grid, but when you need to buy it back in the evening, you will be paying 50 cents for that power. Even under the old rules, you're gonna be coming out behind. Now, here's the really scary part. Even if you're already signed into a 20 year net metering contract, some utilities are trying to change the deal retroactively. California, Arizona, and other states they're tied up in lawsuits right now. In some, the homeowners are winning. In some, they're losing. The bottom line is if your entire solar investment depends on net metering, then it makes sense for you to look 
at getting a battery. The rules are changing fast and not in your favor. So what can you do to protect yourself if net metering disappears of your utility switches to time of use billing? If you're in states like California, Hawaii, Nevada, or Arizona, the answer is clear. You need solar plus batteries. Store your energy during the day and then use the battery power during the peak evening hours. That way you avoid those sky high utility rates. And if you're in a state that still has traditional net metering, plan ahead. Make sure the solar system you buy is battery ready. That way, if the rules change on you, you're ready. And trust me, they could easily change very soon into the future. With the capability to add a battery in the future, you protect yourself from nasty surprises coming on your electric bills in the future. So here's the bottom line. Don't settle for a company that only bolts panels on your roof. You want a partner who sees the bigger picture the entire home energy system. Ask tough questions. How long have they been in the business? What do they see as the future outlook? Do they offer long-term servicing deals and support? Do they know how to integrate batteries into your system? EVs, energy saving home tech. Are they in an atmosphere where they can give you seamless service for everything related to energy in your home? If your partner has the experience, it's time to make sure you get that big battery for your solar system. If you are thinking about taking a loan, look at how it's structured. What protections do you have if the utility reverses net metering agreements? What kind of changes could potentially turn a great investment into a major headache? That's why having battery storage in place, or at least having your system designed to add one later, is no longer optional. It is your safety net. The solar market is evolving fast, and while that creates uncertainty, it also creates huge opportunity. Homeowners who understand the new rules and adapt will be the ones who will win big on energy independence. At my solar home, we've embraced this shift. We're not just panel installers, we build complete energy strategies that protect you no matter what happens with incentives or utility policies. If you're ready to see how these changes affect your home, I'd like to invite you to a free personalized energy review. We'll map out your usage, walk you through your options, and design a plan built for the future. Thanks for tuning in and get ready because the next chapter of solar is already here. See you in the next one.